Oh yeah, disclosure. Uh, Sony gave us a review copy of this one. So, you know, bias. I give Marvel Spider-Man the harsh, harsh score of no Mysterio out of 10. Mysterio isn't in it, need to get that out of the way right off the bat because look at all my Mysterio stuff, I'm a big fan of Mr. Beck. I'm a big fan of a lot of Spider-Man villains actually, a lot of Spider-Man villains that aren't actually in the game, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let's just kick off properly by saying that Marvel Spider-Man is a very, very, very good game. Quite possibly the best Spider-Man game ever made. And I realise that with the amount of shit Spider-Man games there have been, that's not saying a huge deal, but there have been some pretty good ones, and this one is better than those. Insomniac have done an excellent job capturing the way Peter Parker performs. His fluidity, the speed, the web swinging, it's all pretty much perfect. This is a game in which simply travelling around feels excellent because of that web swinging and the amount of tricks you can do in the air, the way you can create your own momentum with well-timed button presses. This truly is a superb recreation of Spider-Man within a game. You can tell Insomniac spent a lot of time getting that right. Every tiny detail, every little animation is impeccably faithful to everybody's quick-witted, flexible, arachnid superhero. The only major complaint I have when it comes to navigating the world as Spider-Man is that one's trigger finger might end up aching a little bit since you need to press the right trigger a lot to keep shooting webs and flipping about the place. But that's something we can blame the developers of the human body for, not necessarily the developers of the game, who have been nothing but impressive when it comes to the creation of an interactive Spider-Man character. This field is carried over to the combat, which is one of the best action combat systems I've enjoyed in years. It's fast, it's incredibly responsive, and it gives the player a ton of options without overwhelming them. With intuitive moves and button prompts for the less intuitive stuff, it doesn't take very long until you're shooting yourself into enemies, hitting them up in the air, flinging them around with a big web rope, or grabbing objects in the environment, swirling them around and then throwing them at some mook's stupid face. While its foundation is in the attack and counter-attack system we've seen in such titles as the Arkham series, Spider-Man expands upon it considerably and improves upon it no end. And the controls are simply fantastic, there are very clear button presses for very distinct moves, and Spider-Man never gets confused about what you're trying to do and nor do you as a player. Spider-Man's web sense is very clearly telegraphed on the screen, allowing you to dodge moves and projectiles before firing back with attacks of your own. And all this is helped along by an excellent auto-targeting system that makes sure Spider-Man is always swinging at the right enemy. Well most of the time anyway. With just two buttons, you can fire a web at an enemy, propel yourself toward them, smack them up, punch them up in the air, jump up, punch them, and then swing down on a web rope to kick someone else in the head. And it really doesn't take too long at all to work out which buttons you hold to do something, which buttons you press to do something, which combination of buttons you use, because everything is so clearly cut and communicated to the player. It's simple, but not overly simplified. And the enemies are aggressive enough to put up a good deal of competition. On top of that, Spider-Man has access to a variety of gadgets such as electrified webbing, web bombs, knockout webs that'll send someone smack bang into a wall and keep them held there. There's a ton of stuff to play around with and upgrade. And by the end of the game, you'll have so many toys, you almost won't know what to do with yourself. The game steadily introduces new enemy types to keep things a little spicy. Rocket launchers, whips, things that can effectively counter some of Parker's abilities, or force you to think outside the box a little bit, never too much. And unlike the Arkham series of games, I didn't find this growing boring after too long, simply because Parker has so many abilities, so many options, there's just so much variety within an otherwise simple combat system. Mechanically, Insomniac have done a bang-up job, almost flawless. I can't find many faults at all with the way Parker controls. I suspect she'll be relieved to talk to someone who's been there.
the story is a bit more of a mixed bag. It has excellent moments and some fantastic sequences, and what few boss fights there are are bloody brilliant, but that's part of the problem. There's not enough of that stuff. If you're expecting an Arkham Knight, Arkham Asylum, Arkham City sort of experience, where there are lots of supervillains and you get to fight the rogues gallery throughout, you're gonna be disappointed. And I must admit, I did find that a little disappointing myself. There are only a handful of proper side missions and many of them are inconsequential, posting no story value whatsoever. When it comes to villains outside of the ones we've already seen in trailers and promotional material, Scorpion, Vulture, The Rhino, Electro and Mr. Negative, we see barely anyone recognisable and what villains are there? What tiny, tiny handful of additional villains are there, are questionable to say the least. With a certain live streaming villain, I'm sure that someone on the writing team was showing off what they knew. But it makes you wonder why some of the obscure ones are in there, but some of the expected ones aren't. Now, I'm not suggesting that all of the recognisable ones should be in there. You gotta save stuff for sequels, of course. I wasn't expecting anything like Venom to show up. Venom is absolutely something you want for a sequel. But the vast majority of this game is the Mr negative show. Either someone at Insomniac absolutely loves Mr. Negative, or maybe they're working with the Marvel Cinematic Universe to prepare us for an upcoming movie appearance. In fact, that famous sequence that was shown off before release that introduced us to a sinister series of five villains comes pretty damn late in the game, and those villains are taken care of rather quickly afterwards. Like they're being rushed through so that we get more Mr. Negative. And don't get me wrong, I like Mr. Negative as a character, but he's not the most thrilling villain to carry an entire game. What Spider-Man does have though is a lot of open world busy work, which is somewhat of a letdown since I thought Insomniac would be better than that. But as you play more of the game, more of the map fills up with repetitive copy-pasted tasks, the kind you'd expect to find in the average Ubisoft game. Enemy bases that need taken out, lots and lots of enemy bases, collectibles strewn across the city, and even radio towers, even radio towers are in this. Partially why I'm being so harsh on the lack of villains is that there's so much wasted material in this game, just nebulous open world stuff that feels more obligatory than inventive or interesting. It almost reaches the point of farce when you get to a new mission location and realise that all you've done is opened up another dozen icons on the map that indicate the same activities that you must perform over and over and over again. Luckily, the web-swinging mechanics and combat system truly are just that good, so it makes some of the open-world drudgery a lot less drudgy than you'd find in your average open-world game, but nonetheless, it's a bit much, and it's a bit much of nothing much at all. Still, the story missions themselves are fantastic, and there's some QTEs in there, but not so much that you find them overbearing, and they help along some of the the really exciting action sequences that pop up. Mr. Negative's story is handled quite well and as it transitions to the story of another character who I won't mention, the narrative takes on a quality and sense of scale that is almost rivaling of a Marvel movie. I personally feel that the writing team on this one was really, really on top form and the way they've portrayed a lot of the characters, not just villains and Peter Parker but the side characters as well, has all been done with extra care and attention to detail. There are also some stealth sequences in which you don't play as Spider-Man, and again I won't mention who you play as, but they're some of the best stealth sequences I've ever seen, mostly because they're very linear. So there's an obvious path forward, it's just down to your timing and creation of distraction to get past. Something about the level design in these sequences is so intuitive, so carefully roadmapped that it feels fantastic, and I don't think I've ever been able to say that about obligatory stealth sections in an otherwise non-stealth game. Not that they're not no good wall crawler isn't adept at stealth as well. It's quite fun indeed to hang off a lamppost and thwip thwip your webs at mooks and tie them up and leave them swinging in the breeze. You can lay webby trip mines about the place which will take enemies out if they walk past them. You can fire a web shot at the wall or floor to draw a guard out from the pack so they're easier to deal with. It's not quite as varied and nowhere near as fun as direct combat but it gives you a nice little suit of options away from face to face 
face fighting, certainly enough to thin the herd before diving in yourself. Also a special note are the Spider-Man costumes that you can unlock and wear, often coming with their own unique abilities that you activate after a cooldown timer. There are some good references in here to alternate timelines, universes, storylines, there's the Iron Spider costume from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you can go around dressed as Spider-Man Noir if you like. And once you've unlocked a costume, you can transfer its special ability to any of the other costumes you've unlocked. Which is very good because the Spider Buddy ability that you get from the Stark suit is fantastic and I highly recommend you get that one or the one with the Web Blossom ability as soon as you can. Pretty much all of the other costume abilities pale in comparison to those two. Who cares about being temporarily invulnerable to bullets when you can just shoot webs everywhere and take out a whole crowd? Or get a tiny little spider robot that shoots stuff pow pow pow. Despite the disappointments I've had about the game's open world and nebulous content stuffing, Marvel Spider-Man still spins a really nice tale and is a fantastic game in its own right. So long as you're prepared for the rather blinkered focus on really two supervillains at best, with everything else sidelined or non-existent, you won't be too let down at all. And let's face it, very few people are huge Mysterio marks like I am. I'm happy enough that Mysterio is confirmed in-universe though, he is part of the world, it's just we don't see him. And really there ought to have been more boss fights, if only for the fact that the ones in here are bloody brilliant and there's just not enough of them. They could have got rid of 10 of these enemy based clear out missions, still had plenty of them to spare, and spent that time on crafting some more engaging content, but you know, that's just me. Still, for what we do have, this is, again, possibly the best Spider-Man game ever made. It also helps that it looks fantastic and has a great cast of voice actors bringing these characters to life. Oh, and J. Jonah Jameson comes on the radio periodically as a talk show host and it makes perfect sense that he's Marvel's Alex Jones. For that alone, I have to say that this game is simply, mwah, if not spectacular, at least somewhat amazing.